I welcome you all for uh, module 8 lecture uh, 3. In this lecture we will be discussing about uh, angle measurement and radius uh, measurement. The topics uh, covered in this uh, lecture 3 are uh, like this angle measurement uh, under this we will be, we will be studying about uh, tilt measurement by auto collimator and then contact angle measurement angle gauges, spirit level and uh, dotile uh, measurement. And then uh, we will move to the radius uh, measurement. Under radius measurement we will be studying about uh, radius gauges, spherometers, cylindrometers, adjustable outside inside radius gauges, cutting tool radius uh, measurement by optical system, digital radius gauge and then profile projector. Now, let us start uh, the discussion on uh, angle measurement or tilt measurement by using uh, auto collimator. You can see in this uh, photograph, uh, we have uh, uh, auto collimator uh, setup. We can uh, adjust uh, the height of this uh, tube depending upon the workpiece uh, height and there is a stabilized uh, voltage uh, supply to light uh, the light source. And then where the various uh, optical lenses are provided uh, and then where there is a viewing uh, uh, eyepiece is there through which we have to take the readings. Now uh, uh, let us see how we can measure use this uh, auto collimator for tilt uh, measurement. So, we have a surface uh, plate on which uh, uh, we have kept uh, a mirror a reflecting uh, mirror. Now, you can see here uh, let us assume that we have kept this uh, mirror on uh, a surface workpiece uh, surface uh, like this and light uh, ray will fall on the mirror and it will get reflected. Now, let us assume that there is a small tilt of the surface like this. So, the angle theta is the tilt angle. So, in this case light will uh, fall on the mirror and because of this uh, tilt it gets reflected uh, in this uh, path. So, this is the reflected uh, right. Uh, reflected light. This uh, reflected uh, light will uh, fall on the glass uh, scale provided inside uh, the auto collimator. So, which we can uh, read through the eyepiece. Now, the constructional details are shown here. This is the reflector M. Now, you can see there is a small tilt of uh, theta which we wish to measure. I can see the objective uh, lens and then uh, eyepiece uh, lens and there is a light source. Okay. Light uh, will fall on the mirror and then it will uh, uh, fall on uh, the reflecting surface. If there is a tilt, the light gets uh, reflected and then it will fall at point R2. If there is no tilt, the light will fall on R1. If there is a, a tilt of theta, then it will fall on the point R2. So, this uh, distance d between R1 and R2 we can measure using uh, the eyepiece. Now, inside the view field diagram uh, you can uh, see here. So, the cross uh, lines you can see this is the reference point and you can uh, measure what is the uh, tilt uh, angle. So, the least count is 1 division is equal to 1 minute. So, by how many minutes the surface has tilted that uh, we can uh, read. 
Now, uh, let us uh, learn about uh, the contact angle and uh, measurement of uh, contact angle. Uh, this is the angle conventionally measured through the liquid, where a liquid vapor interface meets a solid uh, surface. You can see here, we have a drop of uh, liquid and he, the vapor, uh, uh, inter, va this is the vapor and the drop of liquid and this is the solid uh, uh, surface. Uh, this uh, contact angle quantifies the wettability of a solid surface by a liquid via the Young equation. That Young equation is uh, written here. Uh, we have the solid uh, surface tension, liquid uh, surface tension, solid and liquid boundary tension. All these uh, factors are uh, considered uh, in this uh, Young uh, equation. Now, you can see this uh, angle theta, angle theta formed by the solid surface and tangent of the droplet, tangent of the droplet is called uh, the contact uh, angle. Now, this uh, contact angle is used as an indicator of uh, wettability and has been adopted widely in industrial fields as an evaluation method of uh, surface. By measuring this uh, contact angle, uh, we can say what is the wettability between a liquid and a solid uh, surface. You can see here, in this case, uh, this is the tangent. Uh, theta, angle theta is uh, uh, greater than uh, 90 degree. This is uh, angle theta, so which is greater than uh, 90 degree. If uh, there is large angle, then uh, it is uh, difficult to wet. That means, the wettability is very poor. If the angle is less than 90 degree, it indicates that uh, wettability is very easy. Now, the low contact angle values indicate that uh, the liquid uh, spreads on the surface while high contact angle values show poor uh, spreading. If the contact angle is less than 90 degree, the liquid wets the surface. Zero contact angle represents complete wetting. If the angle is greater than 90 degree, the surface is said to be non-wetting with that uh, liquid. Now, we can see here some images wherein uh, we have a fabric cloth treated with hydrophobic uh, agent. So, on this uh, a drop of liquid is placed. Now, you can see a very large uh, contact uh, angle which indicates that wettability is very poor. And we have uh, a lotus uh, leaf on which a water drop uh, is placed. Again, you can see very large uh, contact angle of about uh, 147 degrees. So, this image shows uh, 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 the image taken uh, from a video contact angle device. So, water drop on glass plate with the reflection uh, uh, below. So, the contact angle is less, so wettability is uh, good. Now, how do we measure uh, this uh, contact uh, angle? So, a contact angle goniometer is used to measure the contact angles. A few setups are uh, shown here and a schematic diagram is uh, shown here. A high resolution uh, CCD camera is used and there is a light source and there is a stage on which uh, the uh, dosing, uh, a drop of liquid is placed by using uh, this dosing uh, system. And then uh, the image is taken and then the software is used to get uh, the contact uh, angle. So, this uh, contact angle is uh, very important in the case of uh, uh, making of composite uh, material, wherein uh, the liquid phase, uh, for example, polymer matrix uh, uh, is used uh, uh, with uh, the fibers of uh, different, maybe glass fibers or carbon fibers. In that case, we should know whether wettability is uh, good or uh, not. So, in such cases, the contact angles are uh, measured. Now, other uh, important uh, uh, devices used uh, or angle uh, gauges, this photograph uh, shows uh, uh, a set of 16 angle gauge uh, blocks. Uh, this set forms all angles between 0 degree to 99 degree in one second uh, 
a step, a total of 3,56,400 combinations. So, uh, in uh, a step of uh, 1 second, we can build uh, the angles uh, between this range 0 to 99 degrees. Uh, different uh, grades of angle gauges are uh, available. Laboratory master grade to an accuracy of uh, 1 4 second uh, is available. The inspection grade uh, sim, uh, angle gauges are available with an accuracy of half second and then tool room grade uh, uh, angle gauges are available with uh, 1 second uh, accuracy. So, whenever uh, we want to calibrate other device angle uh, measurement uh, devices, uh, we use these uh, uh, laboratory master grades for calibration of uh, angle measuring uh, devices. Now, uh, we can see here uh, this uh, table shows uh, a set of uh, 14 piece uh, set. Uh, we have a set of 5 uh, pieces uh, uh, of 1 degree, 3 degree, 9 degree, 27 degree and 41 degree and under uh, minutes category we have 1 minute uh, gauge, 3 minute gauge, 9 minute gauge and 27 minute gauge and then under uh, seconds we have 3 seconds gauge. 6 seconds gauge, 18 seconds gauge and 30 seconds gauge. In addition to these pieces, uh, we have another uh, square uh, block. Now, how do we build the angles using these uh, angle gauges? You can see here uh, in the previous uh, picture we saw, we have this uh, mark which indicates that this side is having smaller width and the other side is having a larger uh, uh, width. Uh, when we keep the angle gauges in this uh, fashion, wherein uh, the mark is like this, then the angle between this surface and this surface is uh, totally it is 27 degree plus 41 degree. So, we get 68 degrees. When they are placed in the up, uh, opposite sides like this, then uh, we have to subtract 27 degree from 41 degree. So, total angle between this surface and this surface is uh, 14 uh, degrees. So, like this we can build uh, the angles. So, we have a work piece uh, with an angle of 120 degree. So, how do we check uh, this? Uh, uh, work piece, this V gauge. So, I can see here we can use angle gauges, uh, we have used uh, a 90 uh, a square plate and then uh, a 27 degree uh, gauge and then 3 degree gauge. So, totally it becomes 120 degree. So, this is uh, this combination is used to check whether the angle on the work piece is proper uh, is ok or not. Now, let us take a simple uh, numerical uh, example build an angle of uh, 40 degrees 13 minutes and 15 seconds using a set of 13 uh, pieces. These are the uh, angle gauges uh, provided. So, we have to build 40 degrees. We can see here, uh, we have to take this uh, 41 degree gauge block and then uh, 1 degree gauge block and then we have to arrange uh, like this. So, this is uh, 41 degree and then uh, we have to subtract 1 degree from this. So, this is 1 degree. So, totally this angle becomes 40 degrees. So, this is a combination A. So, ne next uh, we have to build uh, an angle of uh, 13 uh, minutes. So, to build 13 minutes we can uh, select this uh, 9 minute gauge block, 3 minute gauge block and 1 minute uh, gauge block. So, totally if they if we assemble them it becomes uh, 13 uh, minutes. So, this is uh, Nine minute, and then we have to take three minutes. So 
3 minutes and then 1 minute. So, totally this uh, angle is 13 minutes. Thirteen minutes. Say this is uh, combination B, and then they have to build uh, fifteen uh, seconds. For that, uh, we can select eighteen seconds gauge and uh, three seconds uh, gauge, and we have to assemble them. Say this is uh, eighteen seconds. And then we have to subtract uh, 3 seconds from this. Three seconds. So, this uh, angle becomes 15 seconds. 15 seconds. So, this is combination. Then finally, we have to add all these uh, combinations A, B, C. So, this is uh, combination A with uh, two gauges, gauge blocks and then we have combination B with uh, three gauge blocks and we have uh, another uh, combination C with the uh, two gauge blocks. So, totally this angle is 40 degrees, 40 degrees 13 minutes 15 seconds. 15 seconds. So, like this we can build uh, the angles. Now, uh, let us move to the another instrument spirit uh, level which is mostly used uh, for measurement of uh, uh, tilt of uh, surfaces. This is a device uh, consisting of a sealed glass tube partially filled with alcohol or other uh, liquid containing an air bubble whose position reveals whether a surface is perfectly leveled. It is used to check the level of a plane table by placing it on the board in two positions at right angles to each other. When the bubble remains in the center at any point on the table, then the table is considered to be properly leveled. So, different uh, uh, configurations of spirit level uh, are available. This is a flat base uh, level, this is the glass tube which is partially filled with uh, alcohol, there will be a, a bubble here, you can see the base is uh, flat and we have a big groove uh, in the base. So, you can see the side view, we have a 120 degree V groove and uh, the inside there is a glass uh, tube and there is sometimes a cross level is also provided. And this is a square block uh, uh, level again with 120 degree V on the base. Now, the glass tube has a slight upward curve, we can see in this uh, photograph uh, the slight upward uh, curve, so that the bubble naturally rests in the center. When the base is uh, properly is placed on a properly leveled uh, surface, the bubble will be at the center, uh, which is the highest uh, point. At slight inclinations, the bubble travels away from the marked center, marked center position to indicate uh, uh, what is the level. Now, this is uh, the glass uh, tube with uh, markings and at the center we have uh, a bubble and this is a cross sectional view of uh, the spirit uh, level, this is the glass tube filled with spirit and there is a bubble which is this uh, tube is placed in a frame and this is uh, the base and this curvature is R. Now, uh, what is the relationship 
between the tilt angle theta you can see here uh, we have uh, a tilt angle theta a bubble movement. So, this is uh, when uh, there is when the surface is uh, perfectly level bubble will be at the center A. When there is a slight inclination tilt of theta then bubble moves from A to A 1 and V L radius r the radius of curvature r height h of one end of the base above the other end. Now, you can see here B end it has raised by h with respect to the other end O and base length L. Now, what is the relationship? If the length is 1 L is 1 meter and if the one end rises by an amount of say 0 0.02 millimeter, then bubble will move by 1 graduation. Right? That means, if bubble moves from A to A 1, it indicates that uh, the end B has raised uh, by an amount of 0 0.02 millimeter. Now, this uh, photo shows uh, a commercially available uh, spirit level and there is a, this is the pivot and there is a provision for adjustment and this is the glass tube and we can also see the bubble and then uh, the graduations are also are uh, visible. Now, uh, let us uh, study about uh, dotile uh, check In most of the machine tools, uh, dow tiles uh, are uh, used. The dow tiles they look like this. Now, this uh, we have. Uh, rollers or balls of same diameter kept in position like this and we can take the measurement over rollers or balls. So, this uh, will be m. So, this is m. So, m is measurement over balls or uh, rollers and then this is uh, B. So, this is B width of top uh, surface and uh, this is uh, H that is depth, H is uh, the depth and this is angle alpha. This angle is alpha and d is diameter of the ball, d is diameter of the ball. Now, by knowing any four out of these five parameters uh, b, m, d, h alpha, if we know any four uh, parameter the uh, the other unknown uh, can be calculated using uh, this uh, relationship. Now, let us uh, conduct an experiment uh, to check uh, dow tile. Now, uh, you can see here we have uh, a dow tile here of uh, milling uh, machine we have kept uh, a ball of known uh, diameter. On the other side also we have kept another uh, ball of same uh, diameter. Now, we are measuring the m measurement over uh, balls using uh, vernier caliper. Now, you can see here we have kept another uh, ball here and we are measuring the uh, distance over the two balls. Point. 
you can see the measurement it is uh, 242 millimeter and then we have to see the coinciding division that is uh, 6 30 30 into point zero two. Okay, 242 plus we have to add the vernier scale uh, reading. Okay, now we can take the reading 242 millimeter and then uh, sixth uh, 6 into 30th, 30th division uh, it is coinciding with the main scale uh, reading. Now, we are taking the measurement uh, over the top uh, surface that is uh, B. Yeah, you can see the reading. So, it is 195 plus uh, we have to see the coinciding uh, division that is uh, 25th division is coinciding with the main scale uh, marking. Now, you can see we are measuring the depth h we are measuring the depth h it is 22 millimeter Now, we are measuring uh, the diameter of uh, steel ball now the measured uh, values uh, can be fed into these uh, this equation and uh, unknown uh, value can be determined. Now, we have completed uh, the first part of uh, module uh, 8 that is uh, angle measurement, tilt measurement and taper measurement. Now, we will move to the uh, next part that is uh, radius uh, measurement. So, for measuring uh, the radius of a component, the most commonly used uh, instrument is uh, radius uh, gauge. This is also known as uh, uh, fillet uh, gauge. Uh, which is used to measure the radius of an object. Radius uh, gauges require a bright light behind the object uh, to be measured. The gauge is placed against uh, the edge uh, to be checked and any light leakage between the gauge and edge indicates a mismatch that requires correction. A good set of gauges will offer both uh, convex and uh, concave uh, uh, gauges and allow for their application in uh, awkward uh, locations. Every leaf has uh, different uh, radius. The material of the leaf is uh, stainless uh, steel. Uh, it is of uh, two types internal uh, measurement leaf and uh, external measurement that is concave measurement and convex uh, measurement is possible. 
it is used to check the radius of inner and uh, outer uh, surfaces. You can see here uh, a set of uh, radius uh, gauges and here uh, we have a, a radius of different values. This is 10 millimeter radius, 10.25, 10.5, 10.75 like this. The uh, different uh, leaves uh, are, uh, are commercially available and uh, available ranges are like this 0 0.5 to 13 uh, millimeter 26 uh, leaves that is 0 0.5 to 13 mm in steps of 0.5 mm and from 1 to 7 millimeter 34 leaves so 1 to 3 millimeter in steps of 0 0.25 millimeter 3.5 to 7 millimeter in steps of 0 0.5 uh, millimeter and from 7.5 to 15 millimeter 32 leaves are available 7.5 to 15 mm in steps of 0.5 mm and then 15.5 to 25 mm totally 30 leaves uh, uh, will be available 15.5 mm to 20 mm in steps of 0.5 mm measurement is possible 21 to 25 mm in steps of uh, 1 mm measurement is uh, possible. Now uh, let us uh, conduct an experiment to learn how we can uh, use uh, radius uh, gauge for measuring the radius. Now, you can see uh, radius uh, gauge uh, set, I can see different uh, leaves 1 mm, 1.5 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm and here it is 6 mm leaf. That means, the radius is uh, 6 mm, so the diameter will be 12 uh, mm. So, this is uh, uh, to check uh, the concave uh, radius and this portion can be used to check uh, the convex uh, radius. Yeah, 6.5 millimeter radius, 6 millimeter, 5.5, 5 millimeter radius, 4.5 millimeter radius, 4 millimeter, 3.5, uh, 7.5, 8, so, like this different uh, leaves are uh, available 11 millimeter, 10.5, 10 millimeter. So, leaves are available in step of 0 0.5, 11.5, 12, 12.5, and uh, a holder is uh, provided along with this set to hold uh, the leaf. Now, we have to keep the gauge, radius gauge into the holder. Now, you can see how to use this radius gauge. We have a threaded screw. We want to measure the shank dia. Yeah. Now, you can see there is proper uh, match between uh, the surface of uh, the screw thread and the gauge. So, the diameter is 12 millimeter. Now, let us learn how uh, to check the concave uh, radius. Now, you can see there is a slot we want to check, we want to measure what is the diameter. Yeah, now it is 7.5, it is properly matching with uh, the contour. Now, uh, another uh, most commonly used uh, instrument for uh, measurement of uh, curvature of uh, lens surface is uh, spirometer. It is used for precise measurement of uh, radius of uh, a sphere. 
these uh, instruments are used by opticians to measure the curvature of uh, surface of uh, lens. The usual form consists of a fine screw moving in a nut carried on the center of a small three legged table, the feet forming the vertices of an equilateral uh, triangle. The lower end of uh, the screw and those of the table legs are finely tapered that means, uh, the ends are uh, conical. So, that each uh, uh, end rests on a point. If the screw has 1 mm pitch and the head scale that is dial is uh, divided into 100 parts, then the least count of the instrument is 0 0.01 millimeter. A vertical scale fastened to the table indicates uh, the number of whole turns of the screw and serves as an index for uh, reading the divisions on the head. Uh, an electric uh, contact arrangement may be attached uh, to the spherometer in order to indicate the moment of uh, touching. That is, when the screw just touches the surface of the lens or workpiece, it indicates that there is a uh, contact. So, otherwise we can uh, simple method is we can always take a uh, feeler gauge or uh, a piece of uh, thin uh, paper, we should try to insert between uh, the screw and uh, the uh, workpiece surface. If it enters, it indicates that there is a gap. If it does not enter, it indicates that uh, the screw is in contact with the workpiece uh, surface. Now, uh, the construction of spherometer uh, is like this. This uh, photograph uh, shows uh, that this is the central uh, screw and three legs are there. The screw is uh, uh, screw end is conical. Similarly, all the three legs they have conical uh, end. This is the dial on which uh, the markings are uh, there and then there is a vertical uh, scale to indicate how many rotations the screw has uh, rotated. The, the three ends of uh, the three legs form uh, uh, the vertices of uh, an equilateral uh, triangle. The outer legs that means, these legs outer legs of uh, some uh, uh, spherometers uh, can be moved to a set of inner holes in order to accommodate uh, smaller uh, surfaces. Uh, as we can see here, there is a central uh, leg that is a screw and uh, there is a reading device for measuring the distance the central leg uh, that is moved by what distance the central leg has moved. The vertical scale is marked off in, uh, uh, in units of 1 millimeter, this is the vertical scale. One complete turn of the dial corresponds to 1 millimeter and each small graduation on this dial uh, that means, this rotary scale represents 0 0.01 millimeter. The spherometer directly measures uh, h using the mean length between the outer legs L the spherical radius r can be calculated by the formula r is equal to h by 2 plus uh, l into l divided by 6 h. So, h is given by the spherometer. So, using this relationship we can find the uh, radius, radius of curvature. Now, uh, let us conduct uh, an experiment uh, to study how we can use a spherometer for measurement of uh, radius of uh, curvature. You can see we have uh, a lens, the spherometer is placed on the lens whose uh, radius of curvature is to be determined. Now, we are measuring uh, the concave portion of uh, the lens. Now, you can see the screw end is in contact with the lens. So, that is uh, we, so we can check whether the this point screw point is in contact with uh, the workpiece surface, uh, whether it is making proper contact or not that we can check by insert by uh, we have to 
uh, try to insert uh, a piece of paper, if it enters it indicates that there is gap, if it does not enter it indicates that there is no gap. Now, uh, we have to take the reading on the vertical scale as well as on the dial rotary scale. So, this gives uh, the h. I can see the dial is reading uh, 81, 81 or 82. Now, we have to keep uh, the spirometer on uh, a plain paper and we have to press it to get the location of uh, the legs, three legs of the spirometer. Now, we have to mark uh, those three points and then we have to join all these three points and then we should get the lens of uh, length L 1, length L 2 and length L 3 and finally, we should calculate uh, the average length L. again uh, we are trying to find uh, the length uh, L. We have to measure L 1, L 2, L 3 and find the average. Now, you can see we are uh, measuring the radius of curvature of convex lens, the screw should be withdrawn slightly and then the spirometer should be kept at the center, screw end should be at the center, three legs are in contact with uh, the lens. Now, we have to rotate uh, the dial or screw, so that it just touches the topmost point on the lens. Now, we are rotating the screw, screw is moving down. Now, it is making contact with uh, the surface of the lens. Now, we have to note down the reading, the dial reading as well as vertical scale uh, reading. Yeah, dial reading and then vertical scale reading we should note down. By knowing uh, h and l, we can calculate the radius of curvature. Now, uh, the calculation of radius of curvature or calculation of radius of curvature for convex uh, lens. So, we have observed that h that is vertical scale reading plus dial reading into least count is equal to vertical scale reading is 1 unit and then dial reading uh, was 92 uh, into least count is 0 0.01 mm. So, h is 1.92 millimeter and length average uh, length that is distance between uh, the tips of legs average distance is uh, 45 millimeter. Then we have to feed these values in the equation and finally, we get uh, radius of curvature of 176.74 uh, millimeter. Similarly, for uh, concave lens h uh, was uh, 2.83 millimeter and L was uh, 45 millimeter. So, radius of curvature was 120.67 millimeter. Like this, using the spirometer, we can find radius of curvature. Now, what are the other uses of uh, spirometer? So, apart from measuring the radius of curvature, 
this uh, spirometer can also be used to measure the thickness of uh, thin uh, plates, thin metallic plates, thin glass plates. Uh, thickness can be uh, measured. The instrument is placed on a perfectly level plane surface and the screw turned until the point just uh, touches the surface. The dial and vertical scale are uh, red and the screw is raised, the thin uh, plate uh, is slipped under it and the process is uh, repeated. The difference between the two readings gives the required uh, thickness. The instrument can measure the depression in an otherwise uh, flat uh, plate. Uh, the micrometer portion is uh, placed over the depression and the measurement is uh, taken below the surface instead of uh, above to check uh, the depression. Now, uh, uh, let us uh, move to another uh, instrument cylindrometer. See, the spirometer is used to check the, to measure the uh, radius of curvature, whereas the, the cylindrometer is uh, uh, used to measure the radii of uh, cylindrical uh, surfaces. It is a modified version of a spirometer, the construction is shown here. Instead of three legs, uh, we have uh, totally four uh, legs uh, which uh, all the four legs are fixed to this uh, base and this base has a vertical uh, scale and at the center of the base we have a threaded uh, screw and then a circular uh, dial on which markings are there. So, similar to the spirometer, this uh, instrument can be used to measure the radius of uh, cylindrical uh, surface. That means, uh, we have to say this is the cylindrical uh, surface we want to measure the cylindrical uh, uh, the radius in we have to keep this uh, instrument on the surface and then uh, the screw should be moved till it uh, just touches the surface and then we have to take uh, the readings vertical scale reading and then dial reading and then using uh, the equation we can find the diameter of uh, diameter or radius of cylindrical surface. Now, these are uh, adjustable uh, radius uh, gauges, this is outside gauge uh, measure used to measure the convex uh, work pieces, radius of convex uh, work pieces. You can see here totally three points are there. All, the, all these three points should be in contact with uh, uh, the workpiece and then uh, we should move this uh, slide. When the central point uh, just touches uh, the workpiece, the scale indicates what is the radius. Similarly, this is uh, inside uh, gauge, uh, the three points should be in contact with the concave uh, surface and uh, the scale directly gives what is the radius. Now, uh, how do we measure the radius of a tool uh, tip? So, this is a single point uh, cutting uh, tool and uh, this is the principal uh, cutting edge and auxiliary cutting edge and here uh, there will be a small uh, radius is uh, provided. So, this uh, radius we want to measure. So, for that we can use an optical uh, tool radius measurement uh, setup. This is a microscope which has a table on which we have to keep uh, the cutting tool and then uh, through the eyepiece we can uh, get uh, the image of uh, the nose and uh, using uh, the scale provided we can uh, get the reading or we can put a camera here and then uh, amplified image uh, we can uh, have on the monitor and using the software we can uh, measure the diameter or the radius of uh, tool uh, nose. You can see here uh, we have a, a carbide tip tool with uh, some radius. So, using an optical uh, microscope like this we can measure the radius and again uh, radius on the tool uh, insert. So, radius uh, measurement range of such uh, microscopes are uh, 10 micrometer to 20 millimeter with an accuracy of plus or minus 200 nanometer. So, setting time, it is uh, uh, quickly we can measure the radius, uh, 
setting time is about uh, 3 to 5 uh, seconds. Now, uh, uh, the other uh, instrument used uh, to measure the radius is digital uh, radius uh, gauge. You can see we have an indicator with a spindle and then with a digital uh, indi uh, indicator and then we have uh, a fixture with uh, two points, two legs. So, this uh, fixture we have to insert onto the spindle and uh, we should uh, keep uh, this uh, digital radius gauge, say this is uh, the surface of the work piece for the radius of uh, this work piece we want to measure. This is the indicator, digital uh, indicator with uh, the spindle and we have to mount this fixture. The other two legs should be in contact. Okay. Now, we have slowly we have to move this uh, spindle or because of the spring it moves down it, it makes contact with the work piece and then the uh, indicator will indicate what is the radius. So, different uh, fixtures uh, are available, different uh, jaws are uh, available. So, this uh, tells outside or inside arc radius automatically, uh, no calculation is uh, needed directly it gives what is the value. Uh, this uh, can also be used to check uh, depth or uh, thickness of uh, objects. Range of such uh, instrument is 5 to 1000 millimeter with a resolution of 0 0.005 millimeter. So, 5 measuring uh, uh, jaws uh, are uh, provided with a size 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 60 millimeter and 100 uh, millimeter. This gap is 100 millimeter. And then uh, we can use uh, profile uh, projector for measuring uh, the radius. So, we have to select appropriate uh, uh, function, functional key in the data processor. Say we want to measure this radius. So, we have to feed three data points and then uh, the data processor will calculate and it will tell what is the radius. This is a very quick uh, method of uh, measuring the radius. So, for measuring uh, the diameter, we have to feed three points. So, it will give uh, the diameter, half of that will give uh, the radius. Let us uh, summarize uh, this uh, session. So, in this uh, lecture, we discussed uh, about uh, the contact uh, angle uh, measurement and uh, use of uh, spirit level for measurement of uh, angles, tilts. Also, we learnt about uh, how to use uh, autocollimator for measurement of uh, tilt and then we uh, discussed about the measurement of uh, radius, what are the various instruments used for the measurement of uh, radius, instruments like uh, spirometers, uh, radius uh, gauges digital radius indicator and how to use a profile projector for measurement of radius. So, these things uh, we discussed, we will uh, conclude this uh, session. Thank you. Yeah.